Okay, well, since we are amongst friends, um, Samantha and I got together on Wednesday night and we were like, why did we decide to do this? <laughs> But this morning I got up and I thought, you know what this is all about is we learned something that we think maybe will be beneficial to you and you're here because maybe you can learn something too. And so we'll just all visit together and that's what this is about. So just a little introduction. Um, I'm Danielle Meeker and this is Samantha Anderson and most of you know us. So um, Sam and I went to graduate school together at the University of Southern Mississippi and we were both moms. We had um, gotten our bachelor's degrees and found out about the Pathway Program and were inspired by what was happening at BYU-Idaho. And our goal in going to graduate school was to teach online for BYU-Idaho. And here we both are. And so it's been just really a neat experience to have somebody with that common interest. And we went through the program together. Um, and in Mississippi, there weren't a lot of members of the church, so of course we did a lot together in our program. And, um, and so one of the things that we studied in our child and family advocacy class is leadership. And the reason why it was tied into advocacy was because in order to stand up and use your voice and strengthen in the end defending the family, you have to know how to do that. And so we studied Extraordinary Leadership, it's by Roberta Gilbert, and we learned some things about systems theory, family systems theory, and what that has to do with organizational leadership. And so, we're just going to share a few of the things that we learned with you today and hopefully have a discussion about that. So, um, just be thinking about, well, let me ask you this simple question just right up front. Um, what does leadership have to do with online teaching, or teaching in general. So we know leadership has something to do with advocacy, which I teach. What does leadership have to do with teaching in general? Yeah, well, we're, tell me your name. Um, Chris Aranda. Okay. Um, well, we are sort of the leaders of the class, but we're also trying to build those leadership skills in our students mm -hmm. and get them to step forward. And you know, in an online class is different than in a brick and mortar. But still, we need those students who will be the first ones to post in the discussions and, um, you know, take that risk. Be the first one to, you know, show your face and your writing in there, and you know, be the first one to put a picture in. And so you're the leader of your class, but you're trying to train leaders also. So good. Yeah. Other thoughts on why? What? Why does leadership have to do with teaching? Bit. In that video last night, talked a lot about that brother I heard who. Uh, Helped his students by kind of leading him along to find the answer himself rather than giving them answers. I think we do that a lot through our discussion boards and through the way we teach online. So it takes a different level of a teacher or leader than to, instead of giving your student the answer, to teach them how to find the answer themselves. Andy and then Jim. Did you well, I was, was going to say, even that whole idea of becoming a disciple leader. Uh -huh. And not only are we teaching in um, you know, learning secular things, but it's all about the spiritual as well as tying in the spiritual elements and reminding them that the Holy Ghost is, is the author of truth. Mm -hmm. And he's the one that can confirm that secular truth and that spiritual truth, and they can become stronger in their community to stand up for that truth when it becomes even more. Challenging. Mm, I love that. And that reminds me of how I wanted to start this class because ultimately the Spirit is our teacher. And uh, we're here to share some things, but ultimately, hopefully, um, I appreciated what, what Brother Broadhead shared at the end from President Bernard about writing down those impressions that um, hopefully the Spirit will be our ultimate teacher in this class and in our teaching as well. Jim? Like she said, I, I would add too, I've noticed as a teacher, you um, get the chance to be the model for your students and not only behavior, but attitudes and stuff like that. And you have a teacher that's kind and warm and encouraging and such and Christ-like in their way they treat people. It seems to trickle down their enthusiasm and stuff trickles to the students versus I've been in classes, you know, in universities where that wasn't the case and that can spread pretty rapidly too. Yeah, that modeling is super important. What did that 
somebody has a quote on your handout. I think it's at the bottom. Let me turn one of those handouts. What does it say about that? This is from President Kimball. Somebody read that for us. Let's see. No, at the top. Let's do the one at the top. A good leader. Yeah. What's good. your name? Michelle? Michelle. Okay, Michelle. A good, a good leader will remember he is accountable to God as well as to those he leads. By demanding accountability of himself, he is in a better position, therefore, to see that others are accountable for their behavior and their performance. People tend to perform at a standard set by their leaders. Yeah, so that modeling, again, is really important. So, um, in general conference, we heard from Elder Pino, and this is one of my favorite talks. And let me just share a quick message, just a one minute clip from his talk, and then we're going to talk some more about this. Uh oh, hold on just a second. How do I do that? Because oh, it's it's because he's speaking in Spanish. Okay. All right. So we're talking about jigsaw puzzles. Family systems theory nudges people slowly but surely into positions of leadership. And when we consider the whole and each of our each of our parts in the system, let me just demonstrate. Okay, I brought my slinky with me. I I like to teach about systems theory because it makes sense to me. That in theory there is truth, right? Maybe it's not the fullness, but there is truth, and I found truth in this theory. So in systems theory, a couple of basic concepts from this theory, um, it only takes one to change a relationship pattern. The emotional state of the leader has tremendous effect on any group. Leaders um, head towards difficult relationships. The best leaders have the best family relationships. And finally, it's refreshing to find a leader today that is guided by principle, partly because it is so rare. It's part of what sets apart the high from the low level leaders who lead by relationships and emotions. So I brought my slinky so we could talk about how one aspect of family systems theory is that the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. So um, share with me a couple of characteristics of a slinky. What is a slinky? How does it work? Can you tell me some things about it. Gravity, momentum. It's flexible. Okay, it has momentum, right? So one part starts and everything follows behind, right? Okay, what else? It's all connected. It's all connected. Okay. It can have different forms whether you spread it out or put together. Okay, so it's kind of malleable. Uh huh. <laughs> it can get knotted up. What happens when the slinky gets a kink in it? Is it ever quite the same? No. It's never quite the same. Hey, what else? The metal ones have that nice slinky sound. That looks loud. It's kind of that. Soothing. Yeah, they're fun. Okay, what else? Kids will always remember the first day of school. Yeah, that's interesting. So if we're thinking about a slinky like a like a classroom, a classroom is a system, each part is exactly the same. Can you tell the beginning from the end? Is there a leader? Is there, where does the teacher fit into this system, into this group? The teacher holds it. The teacher holds it, I like that. So you're, so the teacher is holding, has maybe some control over how things move. Um, and these are the students, okay. 
other five. Good, that's great. Well, um, I'm going to spend some time over just Samantha, but I guess my hope in sharing with you and getting you to kind of speak about systems in general, and as a teacher of a, of a system as your classroom, where do you fit in that system? And um, each part plays a role. When something, when there's a kink in the system, when something gets out of line, it impacts the rest of the system. And so be thinking about that as we talk some more about learning and teaching in the classroom. Okay, so based on what we've been talking about, um, I just want you guys to throw out some adjectives here. What do you think of when you think of a high-level leader? Just any characteristics of people that transformation, efficient, humility, humility, inspiring, inspiring, challenges. Yeah. Good. Okay. And then, okay, so we're going to talk about some characteristics here. So, what happens when we get a kink in our slinky? Any system that we're dealing with, whether it be our family or our ward or whatever, we'll we'll have those bumps in the road when kind of the equilibrium of things have been thrown off. So. As the leaders, then, we have certain ways that we typically might respond. So high-level leaders are going to respond in one way, whereas somebody that's not as effective as a leader might respond in a different way. So we're kind of going to go through the what to do versus the what not to do and um, give a few examples of maybe how we see ourselves. You guys don't have to you know, put yourself on blast if you don't want to, but I see myself in some of these more negative patterns and then I can recognize, oh, I'm doing that, you know, and then I can maybe move myself to this other side. Okay, so the first one is overfunctioning. So the know-it-all has to be in charge of everything, the overdoer. You're just going to bulldoze your way through everything. Um, any examples of this maybe that you might, not necessarily yourselves, but we could fall into the trap in our online classes. Yeah. Um, well, as someone that's like viewed others' classes, I sometimes see the temptation to want to, you know, respond to everyone on the discussion if you feel like it's not exactly, they haven't exactly understood, mm -hmm. versus letting the students kind of work together to come to conclusions. They want to right. say, no, that's not right. You want me to correct you. Right. And I definitely see this in, in our families, too. You know, that, that's one of the applications that we're hoping for today. In our families, we can recognize some of these patterns. Yeah. And I, so I teach practically international, and I've always taught ESL and languages. And it's really easy for teachers who aren't trained in working with language students to feel like every single little error has to be corrected so that they can learn. But then students will go on overload. So it's you know learning to judge. You know the the teacher isn't you know constantly typing, constantly overworking, and you know showing them every single error. Mm -hmm. You know it's figuring out okay which ones are the most important now. That the student you know where's the pattern that I can show the students that they can learn from. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I think that's a really good point. And then we'll we'll talk about kind of finding that balance between the next one, which is underfunctioning. So this is going to be procrastinating, kind of like, oh, I don't want to deal with that right now, so I'm just going to not check my email, maybe um, be indecisive, or kind of just not stepping into that leadership role as much as we should. So do you guys see any kind of pitfalls that we might come across in our online classes for underfunctioning? Sometimes I did this a few semesters ago. I had a student that had like really bonkers assignments, and like I just was dreading, <laughs> like you know, having to go and say like that was bad, you know, and like you know, you have to have nicely word it and whatnot. So I just like felt like procrastinated, like I just didn't want to, you know, have to face it. Right. And one of those points that generally mentioned as far as the systems and the leadership is that really effective leaders are drawn to the most difficult yeah. relationships, which is not an easy thing to do. I'm, I'm the same way. I'm definitely guilty of that. Like, I kind of want to not read that email right now because I know it's going to be hard for me to hash that out and come up with a response. So, okay, that's, that's under-functioning. Okay, and then sometimes we can get into a conflict kind of stance where, where these kinds of Fault finding, nitpicking, we're blaming others we, um, in our leadership positions. Any ideas on how this might apply to our classroom? I think one thing that came to my mind was like what you were talking about, maybe with the grading and things like that. Um, it's just being a little bit too perfectionist, you know, on that end of, of our spectrum of not being understanding of situations or 
or things like that. And then conflict is something that we deal with in our online classrooms, like we, you know, in a regular basis. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think sometimes when we get an email from a student and they, they're not very tactful, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, sometimes my first response is I want to be like, hey, I want to tell you how to do this instead of saying, you know, let's let, let me figure out what's going, what's really going on here. Let me try to get to the bottom of it instead of just taking it personally and wanting to, yeah, you know, defend myself. Or, I think we always, as instructors, we always have to take the high road, especially uh -huh. in a situation like that, no matter how much. A student may even personally attack you mm -hmm. or or criticize the course, the way it's set up, or anything like that. We always have to take that away. Right. That's a really good point. And then the last one is distance. This is sort of like the underfunctioning, but this might be um, we just don't give it our full attention, we're preoccupied, disconnected. So Last night, as I was frantically trying to get onto the hotel internet, trying, I know. trying to check my email because I really felt bad, like, I haven't checked in on my class, you know, I need to check in. So this would be another maybe pitfall or a kink in our squeaky. Okay, and so then this is more of what we want to talk about. Um, the the, the high-level leaders are relationship masters. Um, we treat our students as equal. We stay connected, emotionally intelligent. Um, and then attending to our own health is something that we got to take care of ourselves so that we can then give back to others. And then the systems thinker is what we were just talking about with the slinky of seeing the big picture and um, encouraging that kind of creativity to be able to let our slinky be malleable like it should be and not being so rigid in what we are expecting. And then on open communication, I just wanted to show um, the video from, I don't know how to get to it, it's not coming up yet. Okay, well, the video is talking, we don't have a whole lot of time anyway, it's talking about having empathy for someone else and kind of putting yourself in their shoes and seeing things from another person's perspective, which is what a high-level leader would do in the situation, to be able to, to have empathy for someone. And then the last one is being guided by our principles, and I think this is where things like the learning model come in, where we know that we're grounded and we know the things that are important, and we've got to make sure that we're sticking to those principles as we we want to be flexible but within you know the the grounding of our foundation. Um, I came across a talk by Spencer W. Kimball that was fantastic. That was just talking about how Christ really was our perfect example of a leader and um, talked about the, this idea of disciple leadership. And we're just going to go through a few of he he lined out these principles of of what Christ did to show us the perfect example of leadership. So fixed principles, understanding others, selfless leadership, responsibility, and accountability. So we're just going to go through, these are direct quotes from Spencer W. Kimball because he can say it better than I can. Um, can I get somebody to just read this off the board for me? Okay, Chris. Fixed principles. Jesus operated from a base of fixed principles or truths rather than making up the rules as he went along. Thus, his leadership style was not only correct, but also constant. So many secular leaders today are like chameleons. They change their views and views to fit the situation, which only tends to confuse associates and followers who cannot be certain what course is being pursued. Yeah, so, I mean, how does this apply to us? What are those fixed principles that we need to make sure we're staying grounded in? The gospel of Jesus Christ. Yeah, I mean, that's really our number one, no matter what class we teach is, is that it needs to come back to that every time. Yeah, definitely. Any other thoughts on? The learning model. Yes, yes. That's something that we all have in common that we need to be checking to make sure that as we're being flexible, we're not being so flexible that we kind of get outside of what, what the big picture is of what we're supposed to be doing. Okay, can somebody read this one for me on understanding others? Yeah, Matthew. Yeah. Jesus is a listening leader. Because he loved others with a perfect love, he listened with being, without being condescending. A great leader listens not only to others, but also to his conscience and to the conscience of God. <laughs> because Jesus loved his followers, he was able to, to level with them, to be candid and forthright with them. He could show forth, we can show forth our love for others when we are called upon to correct them. How do you guys think this would apply in our classrooms? Feedback. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes we do have to give a bad grade, you know? 
And that doesn't mean that we lower our standards. We don't just give out free aids to everybody just because we love them, right? But we can do it in a way that shows our love and, and why we're giving them the bad grade so that they can learn. And it's really out of our love for them that we do that, that we correct them. I think the other quote that's really similar, it might even go on, and for this talk, I don't know, the first answer that you Campbell says about Jesus' compassion, that we can look and see their needs more help to correct them. So I think we can do that even in grading. We can see their needs and try to lift them even in the bond. Right. Right, yeah, let's see. I think it was Elder Bednar that um, talked about, you know, when we are don't want to correct someone or don't want to offer um, that constructive feedback, we're really thinking of ourselves. Mm -hmm. We're thinking of we still want them to like us. Yeah. We want them, we don't want them to be bad of us. We don't want to create more work for ourselves by trying to defend our grade. Right. So for me, that's been important to remember. You know, I need to think about them and what they need, not just me. And it's not it's always an easy thing to do. And then selfless leadership. Um, I just like this part about how, how Christ was not only focusing on you know the people in that moment when he was teaching, he was thinking about us 2,000 years later, and that reminds me of this whole systems theory that we are all connected and that that Christ gave us this perfect example of selfless leadership. And then Jamie's going to take the last two. Oh, and then they skip because we're out of time, but... Um, I was trying to remember what this said right here. Being the best one can be in one's relationship systems is extraordinary leadership. And teaching is about relationships. Leading is about relationships. It's relationship building. One thing that I liked um, when I learned about um, Dr. Bowen and family systems theory was that from the very beginning, he had a group of followers. Everywhere he went, people would walk alongside him and they wanted to hear what he had to say. And Christ was exactly the same way, wasn't he? He had a group of followers, and we are his followers now, but um, what was it that made these kind of extraordinary leaders, people that others follow, maybe just a couple of last characteristics, something that we can build on and use, both in our personal lives and in our teaching? What what do you think it is that makes people want to follow? You show that you love them. Love is a definitely the foundation, isn't it? That's the characteristic that when they when people feel and know that genuine love, then they want to to do what you ask them to do. Yeah. And so um, I think showing enthusiasm for your content area can be infectious, so that the students, you know, want to want to have that same enthusiasm. Yeah, perfect. I think. I was going to say emotional connections. So that when we've been talking about on our team, but what really makes learning happen is there's got to be an emotional connection with someone that mm -hmm. helps reinforce most of that learning. Last one. Absolutely. That's exactly what Samantha and I were talking about when we listened to Brother Brockhead and he was asking for um, instructor um, measuring tools. And we said, how so, so much of what we do is not measurable. How do you measure changing someone's life? How do you measure what will they do with what they learn? These are the kinds of things. It's that emotional connection um, that that makes people want to follow. I guess a final thought. Um, let me see. I was listening to conference this week and I came across, well, I listened to President Uthorf about grace. And this was for me enlightening as a leader and as a teacher. He was talking about Simon. He said, are we like Simon? Are we confident and comfortable in our good deeds, trusting in our own righteousness? Are we perhaps a little impatient with those who are not living up to our standards? And um, I just thought um, it's good for all of us to recognize whatever position we're in, whether it's in leadership in our home, in our family, in our church callings, in our classrooms. Really, we are all connected. We are all like this. We are all on a level playing field. And... Um, and, and I guess I felt, for me personally, that I need to be careful not to feel like, well, they're just not measuring up. They're just not doing their part, but what can I do to, to help them measure up? Final thought um, that came to me this morning was when we think about 
Christ as our ultimate example, what did he say? Come follow me. Come follow me and, um, you know, lead me, guide me, walk beside me. That's what leadership is all about. And I'm sure that in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Amen.